not, you're not, you'll get your opportunity. You just got to wait till the end of the second segment to do it. Everybody cool? Yeah. All right. Thank you. You cool, Tyus? I'm good. All right. Excellent. John, we cool? Thank you. We will get started. And welcome to the Tyus Bowser Show with Press Box and 1057 The Fan. We are live from Mother's North Grill in Timonium. I am glad. Oh. Got a little round of applause. Man. They like me now. I they know. are waiting for you. <laughs> Glenn and Rita with you, and yes, the host of our program, he is Mr. Tyus Bowser, and he is right here next to me. <laughs> Tyus, normally we get right to introducing the guest, and, and no offense, because you brought out an amazing guest tonight, but we need a minute to talk about you before we get to anybody else. Okay. Yes, we do. How up. freaking excited were all of you to see Tyus Bowser back on the field against the New Orleans Saints? For those so of good. us, for those of us that were at the game, because there's a good contingent of us that were there, I see a couple of folks that was in the building uh, for New Orleans. The the eruption when you on that third down, on that first series, yeah, was amazing. We were so excited for you. So I'm just so happy to see that you're back. I appreciate it. I, it felt good. It felt good. It felt really good just to be able to get back on the field. You know, just simple as that. Just get back on the field, knowing what I went through back in January and just being around these guys again. And, you know, regardless of what I did on the field, the outcome of it, I was just blessed to be able to set foot with these guys, you know, for another opportunity. So that was my win for the night. So it was now, a win for all of us fans, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. We were in tears. Um, we were excited. Our little guy, Jameson, who's here tonight. He was about to run through the, the, the walls of his house. He was so excited to see you back. Did you happen to see that video, James? I actually did. I seen it on uh, I seen it on Twitter and I was like, yo, this dude is dope, man. Just, <laughs> but like but like that type of stuff is what what motivates me the most, man. Just, you know, little guys like that that know who I am, that, you know, that helps me inspire them. So for them to know who I am and for him to do that, man, it just meant the world to me. Dude, we were so excited. Oh, man, we're going to talk more about it. The Tyus Bowser Show is a partnership of Press Box and Great Eights Memorabilia. It's brought to you by the Ginsu Kamado Grill and Maryland Vascular Specialists. Their team of surgeons is Maryland's leaders in ethical arterial procedures. All right, you did bring out... We, we described him as the biggest guest you've ever brought out. <laughs> This man is <laughs> this man is so large he could be a senator in Pennsylvania. He's the biggest human being I think I've ever seen. Do you want to introduce us to your guests? Oh man, this man needs no introduction, but there's a man of the year. There's a you know vet that I look up to that I've always looked up to, you know, since he got here and just what he's been able to do throughout his entire career, not only on the field but off the field as well you know, guys like me inspired to be, and that guy is Calais Campbell. What's going on, baby? How we doing? Thanks for having me. When did you, Calais, when did you first know you were big? Like, at what age did it strike <laughs> you? Like, I don't look like all of the other seven-year-old boys. That's a great question. You know, um, I mean, I've always been pretty big. You know, but I got five brothers, three older brothers, and so, like, they're always bigger than me, so I didn't really feel big. <laughs> I didn't really notice I was like bigger than everybody else and like really was like a huge individual until I got to middle school. Like right around middle school, like seventh, eighth grade, people started like kind of teasing me about being a giant. But I've been six eight since I was 15 years old. So sophomore oh year of high school. So basically you were like, you know how we used to see the, the, the footage of Andy Reid when he was a child? Y'all ever see that yeah, footage the, of the how- the pump pass and kick The pump pass and kick con That was you? That was basically you bigger than everybody else there? Yeah, by far. Always bigger than everybody else. You know, always <laughs> able to play up in sports, you know, so. I was a giant. Were you, were you ever not allowed to play on a team because they didn't believe that you were the age that you said you were? Like, did you ever have a time where they were like, no, 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 you can't. You're, you're, you're a 16-year-old. Who was the kid that played in, like, the Little League World Series and found out he was 24? A few years ago? Did you ever have that happen to you? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I guess I, I always had a baby face, so they believed I was young, you know. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, 16, right? 16. Ty, you're a big, it's not like you're a small man. Yeah. 
But then we bring out Calais. Exactly. And you almost look like me. <laughs> literally. No, like literally. At that age, I'm I'm looking at him like it's no way this guy's 16 years old. Right. At six eight. But it's crazy because you see that nowadays with a lot of these kids, man. They all six five, six six. I remember seeing uh I met this guy back at home during the off season and uh we uh he seen me, he knew I was and wanted to take a picture. He's like, you know that I'm 13, right? And he was like my height. And I'm yeah. like, wow, this is crazy, you know? Yeah. He was like, I'm gonna be taller than you one day, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna yeah. like, hey, <laughs> you already say my yeah, 13. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Sounds like the kid from the Cam Newton commercial. He's like, I'm gonna oh, be yeah. your mom's favorite football player. Yeah, I'm just, I'm right now. That's a good one. That was a good one. No doubt. Yeah, man, Taj, you not only are you big, man, but you got the dance moves. I don't know if people oh, see this Halloween God. costume or not. Oh, mm. we do. Now you gotta go on social media and check it out because nah. my man Taj Bowser had the best costume hands down this year. I appreciate it. All right, well, <laughs> we, can, we had a request that came in. Okay. And I don't remember who it was that asked, so I apologize if it was someone who was here. We had a request that said, yeah, that was a famous scene from Latrell in White Chicks, but there was another scene that was maybe even a little bit more famous. Is there any chance we can get you to do a sing along to one thousand a thousand miles? <laughs> oh, man. Maybe, maybe if, once I get in that mood, you know, if it's the right time, oh. I'll, I'll probably do it. I'm not saying that I wouldn't. I'm just saying it has to be the right place, right time. No, man. Tyus, 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 Tyus. 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 I'm gonna disappoint y'all because I don't oh. even know half of the lyrics, but just the uh, just the hook part. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. But I'm willing to learn a song, and then if the time comes, I'll do it. We happen to know you. We've talked before. You've got you can sing. Who told you that? Oh, I heard a rumor. Ooh. I heard a rumor who, that you, you can sing can? a little bit. I did. Who told Who told you I'm this? Not, so I'm what are you an alto or tenor? Alto or tenor? I'm tenor. a tenor. Huh? I'm a tenor. Okay. In the church, I, I was a tenor. Okay. I heard a rumor that you could sing a little bit. I was hoping that maybe we could. I'm not, I'm not sure who told you this, um, but you might want to check your resources. All right. Man. All right. Fair enough. You Fair enough. We'll leave it alone. It. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to talk about your guys' relationship, because I remember you telling us last year about how much Calais meant to you and how much you wanted to get him out here for a show because he was so important to you. Can you tell me about like what you've soaked up, the man's a legend. I mean, the man is an icon yeah. in this sport. Can you tell me about what you've soaked up from this man? I mean, first, just his personality and just how open he is to helping the young guys, you know, whether that's on the field, off the field, financially, like I'll be in the locker room with this guy after practice is over where everybody's gone and we just talk about different stuff. And he'll always check on me and see how I'm doing, uh, how I'm feeling on the field, just you know, through my entire rehab process, he's asked me how I'm feeling and when he feel like I'm, I'm going to be back. And that just just for a guy like who he is to be able to have so much attention and effort and energy towards your well-being is amazing to me. And that's what I always feed off on is just energy and, you know, the type of people I'm around. So for this guy to do that and go out his way to check on me, especially knowing who he is, you don't really see that a lot. So for him to do that, man, it, that was a lot, especially, you know, during that time when um, I had lost my, um, I lost my uncle at the time and he was there to, you know, wrap his arms around me and just wow. to check on me and see how I'm feeling. And uh, there was a picture that was uh, taken during that time and I got it posted in my office, like a huge mural just at that moment because that was such a critical time in my life, you know, going through that situation and, for this guy and who he is to be able to do that and be there for me, man, like that lasts forever, you know. So. Cal Calais, you're the OG of the locker room, right? How important is it to you to be a mentor to guys like Tyus in terms of, you know, because there's so much more to football. Like he said, Tyus already mentioned financially and emotionally, you know, you need somebody that can help you go through these things. How important was that to you for that role? Oh, hundred percent. You know, I've always just kind of, you know, it's, it's about relationships. You know, I talked to the, the old wise vets when I was a young buck and the guys who retired and you asked them what they missed about the game. And it's that locker room talk, you know, it's that just relationship with the players, you know, going somewhere, you know, together, you know, eat, breaking bread together, going to dinner, just, being able to hang out and talk, you know, I mean, you know, the football, the fans, you know, the winning games, all that is great. But the relationship you, you create when you're in the locker room 
that bond is as strong as it gets. And, you know, um, I've always took that, you know, with a lot of, um, a lot of pride. And, I, you know, I know, uh, you know, just all my history, all the things I've learned throughout the game, you know, I want to share them with people, you know. It's no good for me to take them with me. And when I'm done with the game, you know, I mean, I just don't give them nobody else. And that doesn't make sense to me. So, you know, when I was young, the guys used to call it keeping their pension strong, you know, making sure the game is strong so they can get their, their pension money, you know. Uh, and so that's the same way my mentality is, you know, it's like, okay, let's keep the game strong by sharing knowledge. So all the things I've been through, all the mistakes I've made, all the lessons I've learned, I got to make sure I share that with, with, uh, with all the guys in the locker room, you know. And there's certain guys you have a better relationship with just naturally, you know, just that natural communication and just friendship that develops and uh, ties, you know I mean? The, the, the moment I stepped into the locker room and I got traded here and just, you know, ever since, you know, we've had a really good bond, really good connection. You know, uh, it's always good having those conversations. You know, he's always one of the last people to leave the locker room and so am I. So we always get time to talk because we're like the last ones in there few other guys and uh, we get to always like kind of just talk about life and uh, things that are so much bigger than football but we still talk a lot, a lot about football too and my goal is to help Tyus be the best player he can be on the football field but also be the best man he can be off the field. He's awesome man. Ty Tyus nice of you to wait around for your your grandfather too in the locker room at the end of the day <laughs> make sure he's all right he's got everything packed up it's a nice thing for you to do bro. Uh, Calais who is the guy for you? You know, who was who played that role for you when you were a young player? Yeah, I had a few different guys. You know, um, uh, Birch and Barry was probably one of the first I guys love that, that guy, really man. helped me a lot. You know, helped me you know learn how to talk to the media, learn how to, you know, utilize the platform we have. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald is another guy who uh, just from really outside of football with, uh, you know, just take care of your body, learn how to watch tape, you know, all that stuff, you know. And then um, just, I mean, really watching from the, he leads by example, too, you know, but um Darnell Dockett, Adrian Wilson, you know, I had, a, I had a really good group of vets when I was a young buck to learn from, you know, Carlos Dansby, you know, a lot of guys, uh, you know, another guy that played here, you know, only was with him for, uh, you know, pretty much two years, but uh, Anquan Bolton, Anquan yep. Bolton was, it was a great big brother to me, you know, uh, he always had like really good charity events and I would go out, just I wanted to just, you know, help people and stuff, I didn't know I wanted to do on my own yet, but he would always have a really good charity events and invite me along and I'll go out go to his hometown and, you know, help raise money. He had a little basketball tournament uh, he would do. For, Q for days. Friends. I remember this. But Anquan was such a good guy. One day, when the day that he got traded by the Ravens, I texted him and asked him if he would come on. He said, yeah, but I'm in Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> was like, he was just trying to get water to people in Ethiopia. I'm yeah. like, man, that Great is guy. that is unbelievable. It's the Tyus Bowser Show, Press Box and 105.7 The Fan. We're live at Mother's North Grill in Timonium. Uh, the last two games... Baltimore Ravens have held the ball for an average of 38 minutes and five seconds over the last two games. Y'all are doing some kind of clicking right now. Do, do you feel that there's something special happening right now? I know that y'all were winning games earlier. I know that, you know, you expected to be really good, but this is kind of dominant. This is enforcing your will. Are you feeling that like a tide has turned and there's nothing that anybody can do about it right now? I feel like we're such in a, in a great position within our team when it comes, like you said, to chemistry and clicking with each other. And that's just based off of, you know, performance, you know, us adding in Roquan, bringing in, you know, guys like me and other guys who are injured back on the field and just, you know, developing that chemistry, that communication with each other to go out there and play for each other. And um, Coach McDonald, our defense coordinator, mentioned, you know, we're on a – we're on the route to where we're moving in the right direction and we just got to continue to, you know, lock into what we need to do, you know, individually, uh, collectively as a position and overall just as a defense of just continue to work hard, continue to stay in the playbooks, um, you know, working hard in practice and all of that stuff will come into play in the practice, I mean, in, into the game. So um, we're doing a great job with, you know, the little things, whether that's, you know, staying in the film room, you know, taking care of our bodies. Uh, communicating, you know, on the field. And when we continue that, then you, you see the results of us winning games, and that's what we're on right now. It's, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing to see what's going on. Calais, again, like, it's not like you guys are playing poorly beforehand, but this just seems like another level these last couple of weeks. Yeah, you know, uh, Coach McDonald always says, uh, you know, it's about the trajectory of where we're going. You know, we, we put it all together. We have, you know, what, what we want to be. But right now, we just want to be trending in the right direction. So where we want to be, you know, late in the season is at our very, very best. But to do that, we have to be 
gelling today. You know, but going into a bye week, you know, uh, everything kind of resets for a little bit. So now we have to kind of reestablish ourselves and really, you know, kind of, you know, regather that momentum we had going into the bye. So, you know, we're in a, a really uh, delicate place right now, but I think we're in a really good place. You know, we had a practice yesterday and you really felt the energy. You know, guys were locked in and just staying in the moment. You know, nobody was looking ahead, trying to figure out, oh, you know, look at our schedule, look what we can do. It's like, nah, just stay in the moment. Let's just make sure today's on point. Speaking of that, I think the emphasis that we're hearing is the strength of schedule going down the stretch. Obviously, you only play one team that has a winning record. That's the Bengals. How do you keep yourself motivated so that you don't get caught in a trap game? Because that's very possible, right? We can You can overlook your opponent and say, oh, no, we should beat these guys and then turn around and, you know, find a way to lose. We see the commanders last night beating the Eagles. Um, so how do you keep your core group of guys focused on what's ahead of them? Because I think sometimes we get to the bridge before we even get on the road. Yeah, I think everybody in our locker room. You know, I think everybody in our locker room understands. Like, you know, uh, I think we have a, a better, a, a veteran group with a lot of young guys who uh, have a lot of experience, and then some young guys who just kind of falling along, you know, real rookies and stuff. So, I think that veteran presence, we understand that it's hard to win in, in, in the NFL. It doesn't matter who you're playing against; it's hard to win. So, every game is crucial, and you know, we know that. You know, we have some teams in our division that are not going to just lay down. They're going to get better. Cincinnati's not going to just let us win a division. We're going to have to earn it. So every game is so crucial that we don't have a chance. We don't have the, the luxury of, of, of letting the game slip away. So we're locked in. We're standing in the moment. You know, I think, you know, the, the really good teams, be, you beat who you're supposed to be. You know, I know everybody, you know, hey, it's football. You know, it's NFL. The margin for the difference between each team is so more, like so small. You know, every team is very, very talented. Every any team could be any team any given day, any given Sunday, right? But uh, what, what makes us special, though, is I think that we have a veteran group that knows that each moment is crucial, and we won't let it slip away. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I actually went to the Eagles game last night, and uh, I saw that. I saw yeah. that you were in Philly. So, yeah. so how was that? It was it was actually pretty cool. You know, just the energy, just being able to, you know, see it from a fan's view mm -hmm. and see the game, especially where I was at. So I got to see the formations. I got to see different things and kind of work on my game, you know, as a player. But uh, I got to give one of my guys, uh, Greg Ward. And, yeah, uh, Houston get, guy. Yeah. yeah. And we was kind of just chatting last night after the game, and he was just telling me just, you know, how it was for them, you know, kind of overlooking the commanders just based off of the record and what they've been able to do up to this point. And I want to say they had like 10 days off. So he could tell, and even the fans could tell that, you know, from those 10 days off, they, they could see how sluggish they are. And you could see it from the play, just what they was able to do. And he was just saying, man, guys was, you know, looking past this game. Guys was not as focused or just writing this game off because of where they at. And like you said, man, this is the National Football League. Every team is good regardless of what their record says. And you got to come out and perform every single Sunday, especially – when you're what nine and oh, you got a huge target on your back, and everybody is looking to beat you, you know. And you know, you just got to take that into consideration, especially for me, you know, being in this position with these guys. And like you said, just what our schedule and how it's looking, it looks like we're supposed to win these games, but you can't go into that thinking, like, oh, this team has got this record. Like, you got to go in thinking that, man, this team is the Philadelphia Eagles and they undefeated right yeah. now. And that's got to be your mindset each and every week. Uh, I heard Calais mention uh, Coach McDonald. Didn't you used to babysit him? <laughs> <laughs> he is younger to me. That's right. You know, uh, but now nah, he, he's a he's a coach that like you know like he, he's he gets it. Like he's really really smart. That's he cool. understands about relationships, and like he comes in and he's really like receptive to what we think. You know, and I think that's super cool because like you know we have a lot of veterans on our D line, our defense. You know, and we talk through stuff all the time. He'll say what he's thinking and why he's thinking it and what we could do. And then, we, you know, it's, it's very, um, you know, it's a conversation, you know. And so cool. when we have opinions and things that we want to do, he listens. And most of the time, he, you know, he responds. Now, sometimes he'll say, hey, you know, I don't want to do that for this reason. And it usually makes sense. So, you know, it's kind of cool to have a coach like that. That's neat. That's neat. All right. Make some more noise. Tyus Bowles and Clayus Campbell, please. Hey, Great Eights Memorabilia is hosting a pair of Rolling with Santa toy drives to benefit Holiday of Hope, the bowling event, Saturday, December 3rd at Perry Hall Square with Brandon Stevens. 
The skating edition is Tuesday, December 6th at Skateland Putty Hill with Daniel Fa'alele. And you can also find out more about those events and presence with Pepe Williams right now by going to Great Eights Memorabilia with the number eight, greateightsmemorabilia.com. We come back in, we're going to talk about how you guys spent your bye week. Have you seen Black Panther yet? We got, we got to ask the important questions when we come back in. This is the Tyus Bowser Show with Pressbox and 105.7 The Fan.
As I promise, if we didn't get you, we'll get you after segment number two. Thank you for your patience. All right, Rita, you good? I'm good. You good? I'm good. I'm good. I had my beer with a straw. I, I, you're so bougie. I'm not bougie. It's about how Nuts. you, it's about the con, getting it and it getting you there. I don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. I think that's a little bougie. I ain't going to lie to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, first of all. Thank you. First of all, some. First of all, when I drink beer, I be having lipstick on sometimes. So it just makes more sense to do it that way. But then when I drink it with a straw, I get the buzz quicker. So it's a double win, win, win. I like it. I'm not That's mad what I'm at saying. you. Right. And if you, if you, were, me, if you yeah. were me, you would do the same thing. I don't, we're wasting this before I started the show again. This is the best content we're going to do all night. <laughs> all right, here we go. Segment number two. Oh. Three, two, one. Welcome back into the Tyus Bowser Show. Rita and Glenn alongside Tyus Bowser, Calais Campbell. Press Box 105.7, The Fan. We are live at Mother's North Grill in Timonium. Tyus Bowser Show is also brought to you by the Ginsu Kamado Grill. Coming soon, the Ginsu Kamado Grill, the perfect ceramic tailgate or a home grill for searing, grilling, baking, and smoking all kinds of food. If you're headed to the game on Sunday, stop by the Game Day Firehouse, 1202 Ridgely Street, just west of the stadium. Sample some cooking from the Ginsu Kamado Grill. Register to win it your own. Why are you giving me that look right now? I'm not. I'm looking at, I'm looking at both of them because they're clearly watching basketball. So what's going on here? You have a show to do. Okay. I do. You got a show to do. No, you do, do both of y'all are peeking over I can do at the two basketball things at one time. Okay. All right. We're good. Man, she is a mom sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out. Yeah, I heard him giving a shout out to Kamado Grill and stuff. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that while watching Kentucky and Michigan State play. They'll be it, okay. I'm, I promise yeah. you, they're gonna be good. Oh man! All right, so bye week. We know you went to Philly uh, on Monday night, but what else did you get to do? How'd you spend your week? So um, I went down to DC for a few days. Um, I went to the Watergate Hotel. Just got a hotel there and kind of just chilled out. Um, and then I went to uh, Houston Saturday morning, um, had to deal with some stuff with the house, and then got to go and see our guys play against Temple um, around 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and then uh, went out with the guys, a few of the guys that I played with back in college, went to go and see the uh, UFC fight, and um, kind of just chilled out, hung out, went out and stuff. That was kind of shocking, by the way. That was very shocking. That, that was, was very shocking, but you, you could see, you could see, some bad was about I feel to like I almost like the fact that when dudes are clearly not trying to win the fight, like I almost want them to get knocked out at that point. Like I like Izzy, you know, yeah. like I like him, yeah. but I'm sort of sick of it. Like it was the Anderson Silva thing for years. Yeah. Like I just fight, man. Like go, this is a fight. What are it's, we doing? Here? I don't know, man, but it was, it was a very interesting fight. Just how everything kind of just turned around, especially when, uh, I forgot his name, but he was, Herrera. He, he, no, the other guy. Oh, Adesanya. Yeah, yeah Adesanya. Yeah. He literally almost took him out if he had like five more seconds, ten more seconds. Oh, okay, yeah, early, before yeah, right. that uh, that round ended, and then from there, it kind of just started plummeting downhill from there, which kind of sucked because it's like, man, if you would have took care of businesses, then the you good, you still champ, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, so that was pretty, that was pretty that was pretty interesting. And then um, Sunday, went to church um, with a few of my good friends, family, and stuff, and then had a little sum at the house. You know, did a little barbecue and then just play games. Just had a good time before I took a flight back to uh, Baltimore. Very cool. Sunday night. So. Very cool. Good. Calais, what about you? How'd you spend bye week? A lot less uh, eventful than this guy. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm I'm kind of I'm young. I'm a young man in, in life, but I feel like an old man in the locker room and stuff. But I went down to uh, to Miami uh, with my wife and my son, and we just hung on the beach, just kicked back. You know, my son ran around in the water and on the sand, built sand castles, and you know, just kick back and relax, man. Nothing, nothing exciting. Didn't go anywhere. Didn't do anything. Just hung out. Has that changed as your career has gone on? Like when you were younger, were you the? I'm going oh, yes. out on the, yeah, right. It's changed a whole lot. A whole lot. I was in bed by like nine o'clock every day during my week. You know, when I was young, and you know, I'm going city to city. I'm having the best time partying, you know, blowing off steam is whatever you want to call it. But now, man, way different, you know. I sleep, I mean, just, I slept as much as possible, try to get the body to refresh and then just 
a lot of time with my, my son because when we're playing football. How, how old's your son? He's just two, two and a half. Okay. So, you know, and like, you know, I spend so much time on my body to get ready week in and week out. So um, it's, it's really hard to like, you know, really find that family time during the season. I only yep. get a little bit of time here and there. So the bye week was just making up a lot of time with my family. I got to ask the question, how big is your son? He's, he's young, but like, do you already see? Like, yeah. Here? Oh, yeah, he's huge. Really? <laughs> he's huge. How big? What's you the know, percentile? Like, I mean, you know yeah. how the doctor say in the percentile? What's yeah, the percentile? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was kind of off the charts for a little while, but, you know, 99 percentile. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's about the size of a four-year-old, you know, the wow. weight of like a five-year-old. I wow. mean, the guy's huge. I don't, I don't know how personal was it. C section? Like, did it? No, no, regular. He was actually only seven pounds at birth. Seven oh pounds, five ounces. Yeah, like little guy, but sprouted up quick. You know. Wow, man. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. So that was your. That's your. That's your first son. Yeah, my only child. Yep. How much is that? We always like when we talk to the guys who become parents. I was like, yeah, I've got two little boys. I got a seven year old and a five year old. Has utterly completely changed my life. Rita's oh. got an, an adult son. Like Rita's. Yeah, Rita's, my son's grown. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So this is your, that's your only child. Only child. So, so, okay, you, you, as a person who had a child fairly young, a year out of high school, what made you wait so late to have a son uh, or you know, a child? I always wanted to like, just kind of like travel and do a lot of things yeah. that people always told me. I actually had siblings, so I've seen what you know, children do to parents because your life becomes about them and you don't get to do as much. So I always wanted to kind of travel, see the world live my best life first, and then once I got to a certain age, settle down and start having kids. So everything went according to plan. I think it was a good decision. You know? right. So how many kids would you like to have? You know, maybe one or That's two it. more. So you you know. Okay, yeah. a couple. So we'll what see. about you, Tyus? When you decide to have a family, how many kids do you think you'd like to have? I mean, being the only child, you know, I've, I've been around other guys who have siblings, and you can see just – how fun it is to be able to interact with them. So I would be okay with maybe like three, two or three, four at like the, the most. Off. Yeah. It sounds like a nightmare. Ty's going to have like eight kids. Bro. Nah, no, sir. <laughs> Nowhere close to that. But I think it's just cool to be able to have siblings and just to have them around, get to see them grow up. You see a lot of athletes, you know, with kids and just seeing what, they, what they're able to do, man. I want to be a part of that. Yeah, man, bringing my son to the football field and seeing how excited he gets, like, bring him on the sideline. I mean, it's like a dream come true. I've always, like, seen him with other players and, like, wow. always envisioned that for myself. Yeah. But I wanted to delay and have kids later, so it's kind of like, I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. And it's so cool to be able to play long enough and be able to see my son come on the, on the football field and, like, run around and just, like, be in that environment. It's so cool. And as big as he is, and he's an athlete, like you can see it already. You know, you can just see the way he moves when he's about to run into something. He's to adjust. Like he's an athlete. So can, can we? Would, would, would you be okay with him playing football at a young age? Yeah, like, yeah. I think the, I think with proper coaching, if you get the right kind of coach, because I was lucky. You know, uh, growing up, I had a really good coach that taught me how to play the game the right way at a young age, and those habits stuck and allowed me to do it well my whole life. And I think that, like you know. Um, you know, you worry about, like, CT and all that different yeah. things. You know, but I think if you learn how to play the game the right way with your head up, tackling with your with your shoulders, your arms, you know, you know, running your feet and, you know, wrapping and rolling, I think there's a right way to do it. And I think if you could do that and teach them at a young age, it'd be great. Now, it's a battle I have to have with my wife, though, because she's definitely going to make me try to <laughs> really? a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really going to be his decision, you know, and I can see already he, he, he loves football. I mean, Every time it's on TV, he gets super excited. He's like, Daddy, Daddy's on TV. I'm like, I'm sitting right next to you. What you mean? <laughs> That's so cool, man. That is so cool. It's the Tyus Bowser Show, Press Box and 105.7 The Fan. Uh, Tyus, there was something that we didn't hear you mention on the list of things that you did during bye week. Did you see Black Panther or not? I haven't seen it, but I want to. I, I really I'm, want to see it. I didn't get to see it this weekend. We're going to go next weekend. Okay. Rita did. Calais, what about you? Did you get... You know, uh, I really wanted to, but uh, I lost that battle to my wife. You know, she wanted to. Like, we were in Miami. She didn't want to go to the movie. She said, we could do that in Baltimore. So I mean, our I, next date night will probably be a movie I, night. Come I do on. Get I want to talk about Black Panther. Okay, no spoilers. <laughs> I want to talk about it. How I do you handle look, if Tyus would have saw Black Panther, we was gonna have a conversation about Black Panther because <laughs> this, this is the Tyus this is the Tyus Bowser we, show. We have However, a now that he has not seen Black Panther, I can't talk about sorry, Black Panther. Panther. On the next show, we're gonna talk about it. All right? That's two weeks from now. We're gonna be moving <laughs> on to something else. No, we're not. No, we you know what kind this? of society this is? Oh my god. <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, how 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 urgent should we go see it? Now, 
yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Thirteen right. and a half. Give me, give me your. I'm not gonna give away spoiler. nothing. But Can it was, you do a spoiler? No, I would not do that because I hate when people do that to me. It was fantastic. Okay. Let me just That's say, all I need to hear. it was fantastic. Okay. I truly enjoyed it. I think you guys need to hurry up so we can talk about Black Panther. Okay. I, I know Thank you, guys, you. Thank you. I got somebody that's going to talk to me about you it. You guys aren't big social media people anymore, right? Like, uh-huh. so are, I'm guessing you're not too worried about like hearing spoilers or anything like no, that. No, not too much. Okay. I don't all really right. have that issue. Man, in my world, bro, I got to like You got to mute everything. I'm, I'm everything. not even kidding. I'm dodging bullets, man. Oh like, everywhere. Everybody starts talking. I'm like, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. Say nothing. I don't think I've seen really too much about Black Panther on social media. That's it might be based off of who I follow, but for the most part, I haven't really seen anything. I've seen it pop up, but I just knew about to click on it because I already know. I'm going to tell you a quick story real quick, though, because uh, for me, I hate when people spoil movies. And this happened to me when I was younger. You know, I know when the Sixth Sense came out, it was like a really big, like, surprise thing, yeah. right? And I, I was getting ready to go watch the movie, and my mom, for some reason, just had to tell me, she was like, man, it's such a good movie, you never know that he was dead at the end. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. I go watch the movie, and I'm like, the whole time I knew what was going on, I was like, this is... This is terrible. So I hate when people spoil movies. Please never be that person. Wow. <laughs> See, normally I make fun of people when people talk about spoilers or superhero movies because I'm like, I'm pretty sure Batman doesn't die. Like, I'm pretty sure that's not how the movie but ends. But you know what happened that's with Black Panther. This is so different right. that I don't know, and that's why it's been more you, difficult. No, no, one part we do know. Yes, we okay. do know. One somebody's part not, we know. Yes, there's it's no... about what happens after that. That's the surprise. And I hate, again, I'm with you. I hate when people spoil something for me, especially if I'm excited about something. Yeah. It's so unfair. So I just, I I did not really go and tweet that much that day because I was like, I'm going to go see Black Panther on Friday. So Friday, Thursday night, Friday, I kind of try to stay away from social media because people love to give spoilers away. And it really grinds my gears. So I'm with you on that. Okay. So what's the appropriate time? How long does everybody have? It should have been now, quite frankly. <laughs> it really should have. It really should have. Yeah, I think the, like the protocol should be like one week. You get seven days to watch the movie. Other than that, you know, spoilers come. I think I'm okay with that. I'm okay. I'm one week. That's the deal. You get a week, and then after that, it's on you. You didn't try hard enough. But it's care. in theaters, though, right? Yes. And See, the that's whole- a, but that's the thing, though. Like with theaters, especially how hyped that mu- that movie is. I don't like being in there with a whole bunch of people. That's true. I like to be in there once it's died down and, you know, a few people haven't seen it yet like I and go in there, have a nice seat wherever I want to sit at and enjoy the movie without, you know, especially, you know, us black people when they come to stuff like that. Yeah, they want to they want to talk during the movie. They want to shout. They want to dance. That was my boyfriend want... doing the movie. I was like, be quiet. Exactly. Be I'm, quiet. I've been through that situation before and I'm like, I don't want to go through that again. You know, I want to actually sit, listen find all the little details, tips, whatever they want to show in the movie and embrace the entire thing and really have my own evaluation. That's fair. So how long you got to wait until like Black Panther? You might have to wait like three weeks before it starts. No. Dying. See, and, and that helps too, where they have different times. So I can go at a certain time you where go I like know. 11 in the morning or yeah, something. Yeah. Well, not no 11 in the morning because I'm at work. <laughs> but I mean, I can go during oh, the week. Man. I can go during the week where there's not really anybody thinking about going to the movies on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, you know? So I might, I might find a time during All that. right. All right. All-time favorite superhero movie, both of you. All-time favorite superhero, mu- yeah. superhero movie, huh? That's so tough. I mean, like, because the, the last Black Panther really became it for me. But if I go back to, like, my childhood days and, like, really watching it, yeah. I'm a like I mean the, like the Dark Knight series. Yeah, was, that, those were dope. You know, yeah. Christopher Nolan did a really good job. But I think if, you know, but my answer is Black Panther though, the, the original Black Panther. I don't know if this, this new one's on top of it or not. We'll see. It is better. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> that's whoa. a big statement. Tyus, what about you? All all time favorite superhero movie. I always like the Spider-Man series. Dude, wait, which one? The first, like the- Yeah, like, there's a lot of Spider-Man series. It's a lot of them. I honestly can't even tell you which ones. Like Tobey Maguire is my Spider-Man. Yeah, are you a Tobey Maguire yeah. Spider-Man? Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. Definitely. What about that one last year when they all came back? Dude, that one was, that was tremendous. I'm gonna have to go back and see Homecoming, it. Homecoming, Spider-Man, Homecoming. I'm gonna have to go back and see that it. That was tremendous. That That's was probably tremendous. the best one most recently. Dude, so good, so good. Um, all right, so we had somebody come up and, um, Say something that came up to meet you during the break. Brought up the Super Bowl. 
Calais, you know, we've been joking about you being a little bit older, but we know this is part of the story, right? Like you're getting to that part of your, your career where that's still on the table, that's still significant. Um, do you guys talk about it? Like, do you have conversations in the locker room about the Super Bowl or is that you got to avoid- or are you superstitious mm. about it? Yeah. That's, that's kind of how that goes. I feel like uh, you don't want to talk about it too much because you don't want to look forward. You want to stay present. You want to stay in the moment. But you have to have the vision. You have to know that it's really possible. And I think when you have a veteran team like we do and guys have been around for a while, they know like, hey, this is a little different. You know, we're you know, halfway through the season and we got a really good feeling about where we're at right now. And so you let your mind wander there a little bit, especially like on a bye week, you know, kind of reassessing the, the season and stuff. But, you know, I mean, that's the big reason why I came back to play football again was because I want to be a champion. I know in my heart I have what it takes to be a champion. I know this team is special. So I'm like, man, you know, let me ride Lamar's coattails to, to a Super Bowl, you know. And so that's the big reason why I'm here. But at the same time, I know that, you know, there's a lot of teams that want to be a Super Bowl champion. And a lot of teams that are worthy of it. And the person who's on right off in the sunset with the trophy in their hand is a team that works the hardest, a team that's willing to sacrifice the most, a team that's willing to – to put the work in and, and do it. And so from from today, you know, the rest of the season, you know, we had a little bye week, I had my break. The only way we get another bye week is if we uh if we run the table and get that first the first round bye, which yeah. is you know uh, always a nice luxury to have, but at the end of the day it doesn't matter. We just want to get in the dance. Tyus, what would it mean to you look, I know you want to win a Super Bowl for you. Like I understand that. Yeah. But we, I mean, you just nearly made me cry talking about. By the way, this is a weird bit. I don't like this bit the last couple of weeks where you've been getting me all emotional my talking bad. about these dudes. <laughs> what would it mean to you to deliver this man a Super Bowl before his career is over? It'll mean everything, man. Like I said, just because of the guy he is, you, you get around certain people like that, and that makes you want to go out of your way to see that man happy, you know? And I said that with, you know, uh, Justin Houston. Yep. With him not having one yet and me wanting to give him that that championship, especially knowing how hard he works, how dedicated the sacrifices he makes, what he does for this team and, you know, outside of the facility, what he does for us. And those type of guys deserve a championship. They deserve to be happy. They deserve to go about the rest of their careers knowing that I'm a world champion and to have that opportunity with the group that we have, man. I feel like I feel like we're capable of doing that. So. I love that. I love that. All right, make some more noise, Tyus Bowser, Calais oh. Campbell, ladies and gentlemen. I got a quick question before we go somewhere else. And to add to that, obviously you resigned with the Ravens, Calais. You came back in the off season. What made you guys want to come back here? Is it because you felt like this team was special? Is it because of the organization within itself? What made it? A priority to for you because obviously you guys had options but you decided to come back here what was the driving force of that i mean for me like you said just the organization and the guys that we have you know my mindset is always to win a championship for this organization and i hope that's you know everybody's you know mindset but you know i can't speak for everyone else because everyone has other different situations and things they have to deal with but mine is to be a world champion and to see guys like this have it because of the type of group that we have. We have a great group of guys who love each other, that want to see each other succeed and do the necessary things to be in that position. And just what we've done, you know, office wise of being able to connect the dots and bring in the right people and having the right coaches and the culture there. You want what other place would you rather be to win a championship? So that was a big reason why I came back. No doubt. Yeah. I, uh, I'll say, um, you know, uh, when I was a free agent this offseason and I decided I wanted to play football again, you know, uh, I, had, I had a few offers from uh, teams that uh, were willing to pay me more money that, you know, I knew that had a chance to be good, but just weren't sure. And then I had some offers from teams that, you know, you knew were real contenders. And then, uh, you know, but, I, I, but when Baltimore, you know, came to the table, it was like, you know, uh, I started going through the process, like, what's, you know, what's the deciding factor? And uh, I know I'm like, I'm familiar with the guys in the locker room. We have a good bond, a good relationship. Like, I love those guys already from the last couple of years together. The coaching staff is awesome. You know, they do a good job of pairing us, you know, taking care of us. And, um, you know, just the, the atmosphere, the city as a whole. My wife loves the city. We have, a, you know, a great place here. My, my, you know, uh, it's just, it was, you could, you just, I had a feeling like I was like, man, 
even if we, you know, don't win the Super Bowl, we go out there and we give our best shot, but we don't win, we fall short. I have a feeling I'm going to have so much more fun in Baltimore than anywhere else just because I love the guys. I love the locker room. And so I was like, man, you know, we had a good chance to win. I know we do. I, and that's the number one thing I want to do is win the Super Bowl. I mean, yeah, win the Super Bowl, go out from the sunset, you know. But at the end of the day, I know that's very hard. And the journey is really what it's all about, you know, going along with the guys, you know, you know, fighting for it and giving everything we have, but enjoying the journey, enjoying the ride. And doing that with this locker room, with these guys, man, it's, it's, it's special. And, uh, you know, I mean, every day I've been just like, man, that's a great decision. I'm so happy coming to work every day. I, I get excited to come to work. I know we're talking about the bye week. I was ready to get the bye week. It, was, it lasts too long. I was ready to come back to work, man. <laughs> Can't wait to get back to lock on my guys. That's great. All right. We're glad you're back. Trust me. We're at Mother's North Grill. They just brought us a feast, so we're going to dig in for a second. When we come back in, I'm going to find out what slit film turf is and why I hate it. <laughs> we're going to do that next. Uh, thanks to everybody who came out. Thanks to Maryland Vascular Specialists. We love them. Thank you, Alice. Uh, their team of surgeons is Maryland's leaders in ethical arterial procedures. This is the Tyus Bowser Show with Pressbox 1057 The Fan.
It helps my ego anyway. Everybody else is just here to get their pictures, and they're like, bye. Helps my ego. All right. Here we go. I'm going to yell at Rita the way that she was yelling at you for watching basketball. I know, huh? <laughs> Turn my mic on. Excuse me. This is <laughs> this is about what we about to talk about. All right, so me and Calais right. was over here huddling. All right. All Thank right. you. All right. Here we go. In three, two, one. Segment number three of the Tires Bowser Show. We are at Mother's North Grill in Timonium. Rita and Glenn, Tyus and Calais Campbell. All right, so I know now that I, for the rest of my life, have to hate slit film turf. And I promise you, I hate slit film turf. Die, death to slit film turf. You didn't even know <laughs> no. what it was yesterday. <laughs> What is slip film turf? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, so uh, there's like three different types of turf you have out there. Uh, all of them, we prefer grass over turf. I don't care, you know, all of them, all, most players always want grass over turf. But uh, over the last like 10 years, there's a bunch of data being collected. And really, if you look at the data prior to the last two years, there was a big distinction between all turf and all grass. But then in the last couple of years, injuries on grass have went up. So on two of the turfs, it's pretty much close to the same. You can't really see a big difference. But on slit film turf, you see a huge difference. And so the NFL acknowledged that the slit film turf should be removed, but they didn't want to mandate it to the teams. You know, which I guess is business. You don't want to tell other business people that you do, you're your business partners, you have to do something. So they said, we'll leave it up to them. But, I feel like if it's about protecting players, maybe we should be able to yeah, say you have to do this. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the NFLPA standpoint. You know, yeah. we're like, yo, you know, you know, I mean, this is, we're partners in this business as well. We're your partners as well, and we want to be protected, you know, so we're, we're, we're demanding that you change and get rid of all the slip film turf that you acknowledge is, is very, very bad for us. It doesn't feel like that's that hard. Like, what am I missing here? Nothing like, at all. Before we did a media blitz, too, we went through, like, a lot of questions. We, we asked, like, how long does it take to replace it? You know, uh, are, are there, is there enough uh, different types of turf to replace it uh, that can be done immediately. And so they went through and did a, you know, uh, met with the partners that we use for other types of turf, and they have it in stock right now, ready to go. It can be changed in a few days, which to me is like, you know, mind blowing that it hasn't been done already. Let's get it done, man. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, what are we doing? And like every time we played in New York this year, you know, you just, you say an extra prayer before you go on the field because you know that turf, you know, you're, you know, I forgot what the exact percentage is, but it's like 20% more likely to get a non-contact injury. You know, you go to New Orleans and it's like, man, like right after we got the information, I'm like, oh, we're gonna play New Orleans the next week. And I'm like, ah, oh. you know, like yeah. this is killing me, you know, but it is what it is, you gotta play. So, you know, just, you know, pray that, you know, it was be safe. And then now we have the game at the end of the year against the Bengals and hopefully it'll be changed by the time we play against them, but we'll see. Man. So basically man. you like playing at home. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's the best place. Well, it's because the fans get to be there, you know, that always makes it just, that much more special. Well, we always we're everywhere. You know that, right? The flock, <laughs> the flock will travel they for you sure guys. Will. Yeah, we, are, sure we appreciate will. that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we can make an away game, a home game, real quick. But I understand that playing in that type of surface is definitely something that is beneficial to you guys. And I also saw you, Ty, say thank you, Ravens. Um, in regards to the turf as well, yeah. because an article came up yeah. about um, one of the, the NFL, um, the league directors or something was saying something about the turf and you was, it appeared to be very happy with your home team <laughs> I definitely using was. real grass. I really was because I feel like we invest so much in our players and they understand that we are what helps this team thrive. We are what help this team make money. So why not take care of the guys that's helping us do that? And for them and how well they stay on top of the grass where we'll have two games, you know, back to back or whatever it is. And then we'll have a away game. But then you come back that following week at home, you see a whole new, you know, field of grass. And it's like, man, they actually care, you know, to make sure that we're safe out there. So that's why I say thank you, because guys like me take notice of that, especially with my injury and what I go through and know how that, affects me on the field so mm -hmm. for them to go and do that that's why i say thank you Ravens, because they actually care and i hope you know other teams are able to see that and make those efforts like you said to change and do what's right for their players that's helping this 
lead, make money, you know, to keep them safe and keep the superstars, keep the role players, everyone safe on the field. Seems that simple. It seems that it simple. It seems that simple, but, but for whatever reason, man, it's not the it's case. Crazy, um, uh, by the way, today's show also brought to you by the Ginsu Kamado Grill. Again, ginsugrills.com. Use the code tailgate. You'll save $100 on your order. You guys get to see an old friend or an old foe, I guess, on Sunday. Tyus, you've had some good memories against Baker Mayfield. You had one yeah. of your more remarkable interceptions. I did. Against Baker Mayfield. I, did. I think I, maybe we can make that like two on I'm, I'm sure we can. If he wanna if he decides to throw the ball my way, I'll definitely go and catch it. <laughs> you know. Uh tell me about Baker. Tell me about I, I, he's a guy who's been maligned, obviously, but you guys have had some good battles over the years. Yeah, man. I mean, I respect this guy. Played against him in college and just to see what he's been doing to this point, man. You got to respect this guy, regardless of what people think of him, how he's been playing. This guy's professional. He's a number one draft pick. He's a Heisman winner. He's proven himself. And you got to respect that at the end of the day. And that's what I do with anyone that I'm on the field with. So to be able to match up with this guy again, I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, looking forward to just being back on the field with my guys and going out here trying to get a win for us. One of the things that I remember when you had Marlon on, remember we talked about a player that the trajectory was different than what we thought. Yeah. And Baker yeah. was his guy. Uh-huh. Baker was a guy that he really thought. He even said at one point, like, I really thought that the Ravens was going to try to get him. I wanted him to be a Raven. He really loved Baker Mayfield, which is very interesting, yeah. to say the least. But <laughs> he was very high. Uh, on Baker. So, uh, you know, Calais, do you feel the same way? Obviously, you know, he had dealt with an injury after the trade and we saw PJ Walker, who now is dealing with his own injury. So I I personally feel like Baker has a slight vendetta, number one, because he kind of got demoted. And number two, because this is now his old rival. And it could be his last chance. Absolutely. Yeah, I say, um, you know, I respect him, always have, you know, um, he's going to play against him. You know, I mean, he, he put up 42 points against us one time or, you know, whatever this I mean, He put up over 40 on us on our defense, so I think it's pretty good. Mon- Monday night? Are we talking Monday night? Yeah, I can't remember what game it was, but, you know, just knowing that uh, that he's able to put up the kind of yeah. points, you know, so, you know, at any given time, you know, he can go off. You know, yeah, consistently he has it, you know, you know, just been where everybody thought he was going to be, but he's had moments of brilliance. And, you know, this is NFL, and after being – demoted and having to sound the bench for a little bit and then get another opportunity that does something to guys you know i mean depending on who you are what kind of dog you got inside of you if um you know you know if i got demoted you know i'm gonna come back when i get my next opportunity i'm gonna give it everything i have i'm gonna let it i'm gonna leave everything on the field pull my heart out and so uh you know i expect his best i expect him to come out and give it his best shot and we're gonna have to beat him because we know when he's when he's at his best he's a tough he's a tough uh, challenger no doubt all right last thing this week this is our last show before thanksgiving <laughs> So the one thing, like everything else goes away, the one thing you've got to have on Thanksgiving, the one thing you've got to be able to eat. And I know you guys have to work. I know it's a little bit different. But the one thing you've got to be able to eat Thanksgiving weekend is... Mm, mm, mm. Clayus? Yeah, see, uh, it's not traditional Thanksgiving food, but my mom makes uh, this, uh, it's like a family recipe. It's called the Icebox Pie. It's like a banana cream cookie pie. But it's just it's it's amazing, and uh, you know I, I'm pretty strict with my calories. I don't eat too bad most of the time. I have like little cheat meals and stuff like that. But uh, for for Thanksgiving, I got to make sure I load up on the. Your mom of- wouldn't want to come out in two weeks for the next Tyus Bowser show. <laughs> <laughs> and also, can you please send me your meal plan so I can lose a couple of pounds? Thank you very much, Tyus. One thing, one thing. That's it. I'm a big dressing guy, so if I can find some good dressing, I'll be good. Got one for you. My girlfriend over there, she makes some good cornbread really? dressing. I told her to make me some for Thanksgiving, so she better make me some. I'm she put some up. sage sausage in there. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm for real. I'm going to hit right. you up. I'm get, yeah, <laughs> you, I got you. You're you making it, right? You I, I, put on, I put it on the spot because right. I asked her to make me some, so I'll give you a taste because okay. it's good. Right, hey, what's the difference between stuffing and dressing, though? Nobody knows. Nothing. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody. One is in the turkey and one is not. Correct. It's literally the difference. It's irrelevant. It's the same thing, man. Yeah. What we do? <laughs> trying too hard. All right, make some noise one more time. Tyus Bowser, Calais Campbell. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Calais, 
Chris, is there anything we can plug for you, bro, that you got going on? Anything we can, you're, you mean, you've obviously been so involved in so many things over the years. Can we plug anything for you? I mean, I got a turkey giveaway coming up uh, on Monday next week, you know, which will be fun. But, I mean, we have you know, everything we need, volunteers, all that stuff. So it's really just, uh, you know, I mean, living one day at a time, trying to enjoy the ride and making sure that this season is uh, – live, live, I'm emptying the tank, giving my all, and uh, just go to battle with my boys every day. Love it, man. Love it. Tyus, love you, bro. Appreciate you. So happy we got to talk about you being back out on the field, yeah. man. That Appreciate you. Appreciate meant you. everything in the world. Hey, thank you to all, everybody who came out tonight. Thank you to Press Box, to 105.7 The Fan, to Great Eights Memorabilia. Don't forget great8smemorabilia.com with the number eight. Find out more about the bowling and skating events they're doing for Rolling for Santa in December. Ginsu Kamado Grill, our friends at Maryland Vascular Specialists, greatly appreciate them. Man, Mother's North Grill and Timonium, thank you for having us out. In two weeks, we will be at the other mothers. We're going to the other side oh, of town. Oh, yeah, two baby. Weeks from tonight. Federal Hill. Rita, I, uh, no, we're going to the one. We're going down to. We're going down to Anne Arundel County. We're going down. Oh, we're yeah. going down, down. Yeah, okay, we're going nice, down that bad. one. Right? Mother's Peninsula girl. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, Rita, we will see you on Sunday. See you on Sunday for the Baltimore Game Day Uncensored post game show. For Rita, for Tyus, for Calais. I'm Glenn. This has been the Tyus Bowser Show. Yeah. Yeah.